Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second episode of Nintendo Power Hour. Today, well, there's currently only two of us, which I guess is fitting uh, for the second episode. Uh, yeah, we're going to add one every time. No, well we had four to begin with. Well, okay. We can take away half the cast every time. Yeah, so just me next week, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so with me, as you can kind of hear him, we have the house house elf himself, Aaron Aaron Dobby Doobie. Hey everyone. And I am your Jersey Shore Gypsy and very British host, Lucy Powell. Woo Woo And I brought back Lou's nickname. Oh Wait, that, yeah. Yeah. I mean you have to have some part of Lou on this podcast. Some part of the bad nickname yeah. because yes, um, Lou has caught butt cancer again. Oh and no! I know. Ugh. That's so sad. It is. Hopefully, he will. Who knows? Maybe he might get miraculously cured and arrive halfway through. <laughs> Maybe. Or I'm, <laughs> or I'm just being hopeful, but you never know. Mm-hmm. Ugh. So, Aaron, what have you been playing this week? Uh, yeah, this week, um, I have been playing uh, a couple of Japanese 3DS games. Um, one of them being uh, Rhythm Heaven, the best plus, which mm. is uh, sort of a compilation of the previous three Rhythm Heaven games, or greatest hits, rather, um, with some new games on top, and... It's pretty fun so far. Um, really like the new games, but you can sort of tell which ones are the older games, um, even if you haven't played them, because they're a lot simpler. Um, uh. I mean, the music's cool. A lot of the music for the old games was redone, too, so that's nice. Um, lots of side content so far. Um, I'm enjoying that one. And the other game I've been playing is uh, Fire Emblem Fates. Well, technically, Fire Emblem Fire If. Emblem, but. Sure, Fire Emblem If, Dark Knight Kingdom, uh, specifically. Um, and I've been really impressed with that one. Um, it's one of the... I think playing the Fire Emblem series like before the nine-month uh, localization period was one of the, the big reasons that I got serious about learning Japanese recently. And it's... Uh, pretty cool to actually get the chance to do that now um mm-hmm. but yeah the game itself uh the gameplay is i think much improved from awakening so awakening had a lot of luck based stuff um that you ended up just having to compensate for by making all your guys really strong but uh this one brings it back a little bit so that the only random chance is uh did you hit and did you get a critical um, and I guess there are active skill activation too, but you don't have to like pair up your units and uh, hope that they defend or get a bonus attack because mm-hmm. those are on new systems now, so that you can always predict when it will happen. Um, played around with a bit of the side stuff on that; it's pretty cool. Um, I think the only complaint so far I have is that the story seems to be really all over the place. But uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does sound really cool. Like I actually, I can't wait for this game to come to the West. I just can't mm-hmm. speak Japanese, so playing the Japanese version isn't an option. And I don't have a Japanese 3DS either. But uh, one question though. Which I know you said Dark Knight Kingdom. Yeah. Did you down get downloaded copy and choose? Yes, I did. So you chose the north. I did choose the north side. Oh. And uh, I think the scene where you make the choice. I think we got to look at that for me at E3, but it was really well done. And honestly, I I was planning on playing this game a lot uh, last Saturday. But I ended up getting to the getting to that fork and then just putting the game down for most of the day because I couldn't make up my mind. Mm. Um, 
And then, of course, the game made me feel horrible about my decision immediately after, but I think that was <sighs> to be expected. Yeah, I think it probably was. <sighs> See, I'm thinking I'm going to go down the same route and get a downloaded copy mm-hmm. and then pick, because the decision seems to be such a big part of the game and making the decision before I play it is something where I'm a bit like, eh? Yeah. And... I bought like a 16 gigabyte micro SD card for my new and 3DS, and I haven't used it that's really good yet because the game is like three gigabytes. Hmm, that's big. Yeah, it's pretty big. Because Xenoblade was something like 4.8, I uh-huh. want to say. I know it was over four gigs, and, and everyone was complaining because the normal 3DS only comes with four. Oh, the new 2DS only comes with four. Right, and even Awakening was like just one gigabyte by itself. So this is like this is huge. Oh, I still need to beat that game. I got so distracted. Oh. You know, I I was playing it. I got like chapter fourteen, fifteen, mm-hmm. and then Xenoblade came along, and then Splatoon came along, <laughs> and every time I was gonna play it. Something else came along. Oh, it's fine. It'll be a summer game. Mm-hmm. I think. Because I'm going away for like five weeks. Like into different places. I'm traveling quite a lot. Because when you live in Europe, you visit Europe. Uh-huh. <laughs> you don't go for like a five hour drive. Yeah, <sighs> I think it'll be a good, uh, it'll be a good summer game because it, when you get into it, it really pulls you in. Mm-hmm, yeah, I've heard so many people say, "Oh, I spent 100 hours. I spent 300 hours." <laughs> yeah, I'm so like, <laughs> oh. <sighs> so what I've been playing this week is, well, I started off with Earthbound Beginnings, mm-hmm. which you'll hear a bit more about later, because we have some special plans. Yes, mm-hmm. we do. So yeah, but that was because I wanted to get ahead because Yoshi's Woolly World was released on Friday in the UK, which is pretty cool. Mm. Though Australia, I think, got it a day earlier, which I don't understand why. The release date schedule is so weird in general for that game. Oh, it is. But then being, I ordered it from Amazon, and Amazon messed up. Oh no. Amazon did not get it to me until Monday, oh. and I was very disappointed. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, it is quite good. It's cute. It's like cuddly. It's like the sort of game which makes you feel warm when you play it. But it's really hot outside, so I'm like, <laughs> it's not necessarily the best thing. Uh, yeah, it's oh. been pretty warm around here, too. No, we had the hottest day in nine years, and because we are not used to hot weather, uh-huh. we are used... Like, seriously, if it's, like, 20 degrees, everyone's like, shorts, shorts, summer! <laughs> like, literally, we are not adapted to this. Like, we can handle 10... It's, like, 10 degrees, and we're like, whoop, awesome. But 33, we die, and nobody has aircon because we've never really needed it. Yeah. <laughs> And neither does my school. And it is very hot and very smelly. Yeah. And it's not very nice. Oh yeah, and everything's drying up. Because we are weather from this we are weather from the south of France. Oh, no. And nobody waters anything. So everything's drying up apart from the cricket pitches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been uh it's been around uh like a hundred Fahrenheit, which is like uh thirty 38 Celsius, I think. Oh. Um, and yeah, and it's been really humid here too, which has just made it unpleasant in general. Oh yeah. But I mean, I know even the other areas of the U.S. haven't been quite this hot, or have been hotter than this rather. Um, but again, we're just not used to it. So. Yeah. Oh, stupid global warming. <sighs> Man. I should get used to this. Just, uh, just global warming stop so yeah, we can yeah, stop. not, like, heat and, like, ugh. Okay. So, first topic, if it counts as that, 
the accounts at Topic. So, yesterday, yes, yesterday, mm-hmm. or earlier this week, depending on when you are listening, or who knows, maybe if you're listening in the future, it will be a year ago, <laughs> and you know what's going to happen, and you're just laughing at us. But, Yacht Club Games recently announced that one, there's going to be a physical version of Shovel Knight, which is coming to PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, and 3DS, and PC, but that is in Europe only. And Really? I'm slightly con- yeah, I'm concerned, because there was, I don't think there was a European release date when they announced all of this stuff, which has me a bit worried. <sighs> No PS Vita version. Loads of people were complaining about that. I mm. don't. Uh, it's awkward, but honestly, people are complaining why it's on the 3DS, not the Vita. But I think it probably sold more copies on the 3DS instead of the Vita. Uh, I mean, that's most 3DS games as compared to just about any Vita game. Yeah. Yeah. And I say that I, think, I say that as someone who owns and loves a Vita. But Yeah. I need to get a Vita because I want to play like all the JRPGs on there. Uh-huh. It's just a time thing. Yeah, it is a it's a really good JRPG machine. No, oh, yeah. Persona 4 Golden, I want to play uh-huh. it too much. <laughs> oh, well. But more interestingly, if that's a word, um they said and I quote also We've heard cries of bringing more exclusive content to Nintendo platforms. It might not be quite what you expect, but keep an eye out for another Megaton announcement soon. Well. Do you have any idea what you think this could be? I mean, my first thought when I heard about Nintendo exclusive content is, like... Well, it's probably going to be a parallel to the exclusive content the other systems have got, and we'll get like some Nintendo-owned character in the game. Because I think the the Sony releases got, I believe, Kratos. Kratos. Yeah, yeah, from God of War, and I think the Xbox One's got the Battle Toads. Mm-hmm. Now, if I remember correctly, PlayStation got a Kratos boss, and I think they can play as Kratos. I believe you can. Yeah. And Xbox, I don't know whether you can play as the Battletoad, but I'm pretty sure you had like this huge boss fight with with all of them, which mirrored the Battletoad stages, Mm -hmm. like the iconic ones, so the one on the speeder, some going down rope stuff. Right. Just, so I'm assuming it's going to be some sort of boss. But it's the question of what character it could be. I mean, they were also telling us uh, <laughs> that it would not be what we expect, and we kind of just said what we expected. Um, I mean, it would. <laughs> it's weird because Shovel Knight pulls so obviously from uh, classic Nintendo games like Mega Man and uh, Zelda 2, which mm-hmm. almost makes me think that like we could see a Zelda 2 boss or a Zelda 2-inspired stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it could fit in. Yeah, see, I was thinking, well, first, because Megaton, Megaton, if you haven't seen the announcement, is it all in caps? Mm-hmm. So I first thought was Mega Man, but then I was like, no, he's not my Nintendo own property. He's in Smash Bros, but he's still Capcoms. Mm -hmm. So I doubt that's happening. And I tried Googling Nintendo Megaton, and I just ended up with this story. Alright. So, because I thought it could be a franchise hint. But then, I thought that maybe it could be Dark Link, thinking mm-hmm. about it. Because he... Mm, spoilers for Zelda 2. <laughs> if it has much of a story. Um, the 
final boss for Zelda 2 is Dark Link. Right. So I was thinking, hmm, could it be at the end? Because Shovel Knight does obviously, like, as you pointed out, he has mirror a lot of Link's moves in that game. Mm -hmm. Like the down stab and, like, the forwards hit sort I of think thing. So. With better range, because Link's range in Zelda 2 is pitiful <laughs> and tiny. Yep. And then his little dagger is not... It, it's not good, okay? That is the smallest sword I've ever seen in a video game that's been called a sword. <laughs> it's like, not even... It's like the width of him, okay? Like, and I'm assuming Link's not fat, okay? So what does that give him? Like, less than a foot? Yeah, I don't know. That's all you need to shift someone. <sighs> I know, but it does mean you get hit a lot. Yeah. Mm. And for someone who is not good at video games, a.k.a. me, it is not useful at all. Oh. Oh, do you have any other ideas? Um, what do you think of the possibility of Amiibo support? Oh. What do you think maybe it'll be like Super Mario Maker, where you scan your Amiibo in and you... And uh, Shovel Knight gets a skin based on that character. Actually, those aren't amiibo based. Discovered that the other day. Wait, oh. let me see if I can find the story, and then I can link it to you. I found it on Nintendo Enthusiast because they have all the. Lou's not here. I can plug them. Nintendo Enthusiast. Okay, <laughs> look, they literally have anything Nintendo related on there pretty much really, really quickly, as well as Nintendo Live. And they are, like, my go-tos for Nintendo News, literally, because there's, like, a whole team of them just, like, scanning the internet for Nintendo stuff. Okay, um, Super Mario Maker. Amiibo. See, I know who wrote it. Oh, here we are. Here, I found this the other day. Yep. Oh, wow, they called it Super Mario Maker 8. Oh, 8 bit skins, oh well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, I'm about to say, hey guys, you messed up your title, but nope. <laughs> I messed up my reading. Uh, okay, when it was unveiled that Super Mario Maker would have character skins in the game in 8 bit form, such as Link and Wii Fit Trainer, it was assumed that this would be another way for people to use or buy amiibo characters in order to unlock them in game. It appears, thankfully, that this is not the case. You will unlock more characters by completing a 100 Mario Challenge mode, and other characters will only show up in the Super Mario Bros. NES style of levels. Yep. So is the, they are unlockable. They definitely, they definitely uh, unlocked them by scanning Amiibo um, on the Treehouse live stream after E3. Hmm. Um... Which, uh, I mean... Oh, well. I don't know if uh, the article is mistaken or if, um, or if they yeah, could I be unlocked not... both, uh, both ways, but given some of the other stuff that's been locked behind Amiibo uh, already, it, it seems like an unusually small feature to have unlockable other ways as well. Yeah. I guess there isn't that much you could do with Mario Maker if you or Super Mario Maker if you want to include the whole cast. Let's see. Maybe this article could have been. It, it's not updated, and it is from like two weeks ago. Hmm. Hmm. I kind of hope it's not Amiibo lot. It could be that you can scan the Amiibo first if you don't want to beat the Mario levels. Mm -hmm. Or it could be they have a limit, and then you scan your amiibo to like use it again. So it's like a bit of a timer cooldown, mobile sort of thing. That would be weird. Hmm. Um. It's confusing. I, don't know. I can't say I can't say I would mind if they were exclusively amiibo locked because I have most of them. <laughs> Uh, the thing is, is I'm not sold on Super Mario Maker, so honestly, I don't care right now what they do with Amiibo with that game. I don't care if you have to own that huge Amiibo thing to even like play half the game. Oh, the, the giant 8-bit one? 
the giant 8-bit one, yeah. which I think looks a bit ugly, if I'm honest. You think so? I think so. It's like, it's cool, if you know what I mean. And I look at it, but it's like, is it the sort of thing I'm going to put on my shelf next to my, like, Shulk and my Little Mac? Am I going to, like, display this huge, like, blobs of squares? It's cool, and I see why they did it, because it's 8-bit. But I think the majority of the Amiibo figures look better. Mm-hmm. Except for maybe some of like the original ones, like Peace and Link. <laughs> because, and the faces. The faces look terrible. Like, I don't understand who's in charge of making faces in Nintendo's like little factory thing. Because they need to be able to make them. But, I think they're getting better. Yeah, the, they are. The newer ones do look a lot better. Um, I, I don't think I've seen many, or if any at all, complaints about uh, Lucina's face being derpy like Marth's was. Apparently it is. Yeah. Or at least in the concept art it was. But I also loved how Nintendo used the most derpy face mark in all of their promotional stuff. <laughs> and they were like, Mark is getting resolved. And then you see like, the derpy face and was just like... <laughs> <laughs> the only one they can find. Ah, <sighs> no. Also, they redesigned some of them, and they redesigned Villager, and I do not like that. I prefer the older Villager design, and I'm. Ugh. And now I was going to buy one for my little brother because he loves Animal Crossing mm-hmm. and he loves that character, and he thinks he's super cute. And it was going to be my birthday present, but now I think he looks ugly. <laughs> so I'm like, do I buy you? Do I not buy you? I think. It's weird, they made the eyes smaller for the redesign, right? Yeah, they did. And I think those eyes are much more in proportion with uh, the concept art that the figure is based on, but the head is a little uh, too big, I think. Mm-hmm. I think they need, to, they need to make the head smaller in order for it to look right, and obviously that's a bigger deal than just moving where the decals are placed. Mm-hmm. See, I think I like the big eyes. It makes them look, like, cute. Like, you know, when you have, like, the cartoons. Mm -hmm. And you have the character with the big eyes. You're like, oh. But I feel like now it feels like he's a bit of an awkward haircut. You know, when people get their haircuts, like, quite high up their forehead. Mm -hmm. It feels like that right now because of where his eyes are compared to his, like, head. It looks like he's going a bit bold, if I'm honest. Like, he's ten years old, already going bold. (laughs) It's it's not a good life for villager. It's why oh. we only see him as a child. <laughs> That's my little theory. Going bald early, clearly, because he's worried about uh, the crippling debt he's in. Homnuck. Yeah, it's all his you fault. You feel that? <sighs> Seriously, though, Homnuck. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Next topic. On a bit of a random note from there. E3 was two weeks ago. We're sorry, we didn't record last week. Things kind of happened in flashes. But, so I think we should probably do this. What was your E3 2015 game of the show? Or, like, game on, like, runners-up and stuff? Um... My answer keeps changing, like, every time I think about this. Um, Mm -hmm. It's... See, are you doing it by what was shown at E3? Yeah, that's that's the question. Because... What was shown before? I want... I desperately want to include uh, (laughs) the Treehouse live stream in uh, my consideration here. You can. Yeah, because... I mean, it we talked show, about this. So. The, uh, <laughs> the digital event itself was not great. Um, no. And this game is one that, in particular, was shown off really badly during the digital event. Um, but my game of show was uh, Gene Ibenroku Sharp FE, previously known as the Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem Crossover Project. Why? Why? Why did you? 
what does that name even mean? Like it means uh, it's just the Japanese title, and they've said it's a okay, overhead okay. title, so that's not the official English title. Um, but it means revelation of the illusion. Ooh. Um, but yeah, taking Treehouse Live into event into account, where they showed gameplay rather than a trailer that showed even less gameplay than the previous one with a worse song than the previous one. They showed gameplay. They showed just like 30 solid minutes of playing the game, and it looks really good to me. And I think it's the one coming off the show that I'm most excited for. Um, Hmm. If you know me, you know I'm a big fan of Atlas. I'm a big fan of the Shin Megami Tensei series. Um, and this looks like they took elements from Shin Megami Tensei and Persona, as well as elements from Fire Emblem, like both gameplay elements and elements from the lore from both these series, and combined them all to make something that's completely different from both. And um, I'm really excited just to see something new from uh, this development team that I'm a big fan of, and... I am even more excited that this has roots in two franchises that I love a whole lot. Um, But seeing the gameplay during Treehouse Live really solidified it for me. Um, It looks like they've taken the dungeon exploration style and setting from a Shin Megami Tensei game and combined it with uh, fast-paced combat that's more in the style of Persona and... They have a bunch of Fire Emblem influences infused in everything from the characters to the story to the gameplay because they play off the weapons triangle. The characters look like they embody Fire Emblem classes. And it's just, I'm really looking forward to it uh, just to see more about it. And I think it's the one game that was shown at E3 that I really don't have any bad feelings towards. Because even the other games I'm excited for, like Doom and Mirror's Edge um, and Super Mario Maker, like I have, I like have some sort of nagging, um, nagging reservation towards. <laughs> um, but I think this one is the one that I'm just like all in. Yes, I want to play this right now, and I can't wait. Mm-hmm. I think when watching the digital event particularly when watching the Twitch comments when this was shown. It was... Because nobody... Because the problem with E3 that Nintendo have, that they're kind of in, is that not everybody watches the Nintendo Directs all through the year. But a lot more people watch E3. And so they look at this game, which has already been shown, Mm -hmm. so they expect the hardcore fans to somewhat know what it is, but everyone else looks at this... He's like, pop... Like persona looking characters, and it's not called persona. And then everyone's calling weeaboo, weeaboo, <laughs> and then, like with this like really Japanese pop song in the background. And I think I'm actually really excited for this game because when it was Shimagami Cross Fire Emblem, I think a lot of people were expecting more Fire Emblem, like inspired by Shimagami Tensei instead of the other way around. Mm-hmm. Like, more tactical. Sure. Like, SRPG. That's it, isn't it? Right, right. S- SRPG gameplay. But it's become more, instead of Shimagami Tensei, more Persona, which is one of the branches. Which I think is really cool. I think Persona is awesome. And I didn't watch Treehouse Live. I need to. It's like a long list of my E3 mm-hmm. 2015 catch-up. Because I'm still catching up. But... I think it definitely looks really cool, and I am really excited for it. And it is one of my runners-up. But the game which I'm most excited for is Star Fox Zero, which is coming out this year. Mm. And, yep, some people... It's a bit controversial, I guess. Because <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is. It is a bit controversial. Because it's... A reimagining of the Star Fox series, which I think it'll be quite cool, because Miyamoto has his hands on it, so it's going to be good, and I'm hoping 
I'm sorry if you can hear seagulls. Uh, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear <sighs> The joys of living... Oh, okay, good. They were quite loud. I was quite scared. <sighs> but I feel like Softbox's series, which, you know, this next one, it was like, okay, it was good for the time. You look back and you're like, eeeeh. But then Star Fox 64 is so good. Like, it's one of the few N64 games which I will play. Because, as a whole, I'm not a big fan of that era. Mm -hmm. But I think Star Fox 64 is phenomenal. And then after that, the Star Fox franchise sort of went downhill a bit. And like... Seagulls. And then they had the dinosaur one. And then they had the one with all the on-foot... Stuff right. which was Star okay. Fox Assault. And then they had Star Fox Command, I think it was, which was like a tactical thing uh-huh. on the DS. Yep. And then they remade the first, the second one, which was amazing. But so I'm hoping that this will be like as good. The one thing I am concerned about is the moving round and targeting. Mm-hmm. Like that is a thing where I'm like, mm, is it going to work? If you know what I mean. And listening to some people talk about their reactions to it. Some people have been a bit. Have been a bit iffy with it. Though apparently they did have a bad gamepad. So I'm hoping that was it. Mm. But like I'm a lot more sold on it now. Because before if it was motion controls. I would have been like no. No get it away. Get it away. I'm using the stick. <laughs> but ever since I played Splatoon. I'm a bit more open. Because I was like, Splatoon, motion controls, who was going to use that? Let's all use the stick. And then I used the motion controls, <laughs> and it made so much sense. And I was like, okay, Nintendo, you actually, you did okay. Your treehouse guys were not actually lying. They were they were telling the truth. The motion controls works the best. And I have faith in them. Also, I would love to see a really cool Star Fox amiibo. Throwing it out there. Yeah, they're talking about uh, they were talking about something they wanted to do, um, but they were still looking into the viability of it. Or they would they would release uh, an R wing amiibo that can like transform like a Transformers figure into the uh, Walker. That'd be so cool. Also, they have Wally in there. Throwing it out there. <laughs> Like, they do. He looks just like Wally with, like, a... Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Wally. But, <laughs> like, literally, that is my favorite... That's, like, one of my favorite films, just because nostalgia. And it's just... He's not yellow, and he's not rusty, but he is Wally. He is literally... He is. Look at the design. <laughs> like, they may... As, they're going to get... They're going to get sued. <laughs> yeah, I so. bet you they will. You think they're going to get sued even though Wally looks a lot like Rob? Hmm, I guess so. But I guess to everybody who was an NES, they'll look at it and they'll be like, Wally! <laughs> <sighs> but it, it looks okay. It's not the prettiest game in the world, let's, sure. let's be honest. Sure. <laughs> but it looks fun, if you know what I mean, which to me is what matters most. Like, if it's ugly, I will, like, just own the game, like, in the end. But this reminds me of Hyrule Warriors when I remember when it was mm-hmm. first shown in, like, December. And it came out in September, I think. Though it might have come out a bit earlier in Japan. Where everyone looked at it the first and was like, that is so ugly. How can Nintendo release a game which is the Zelda IP with this? What are they doing? But then it ended up that... It looked pretty good. It was colourful. It mm-hmm. was bright. It had lots of things on the screen. I think this was our first and HD Zelda game, right? No, we... There was Wind Waker HD. Oh, sure. But this is... Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so second sort of HD the, Zelda uh, game. The first HD Zelda game that like was in the, the realistic Ocarina of Time style. Mm-hmm. And seeing like those locales was... Uh, Really striking for me. Mm-hmm. As someone who never played, well, I have played Ocarina of Time, 
Oh, by the way, that is coming to Wii U Virtual Console this week in Europe. Yeah, if you uh, haven't already played the 3DS remake, I guess. I own it on Wii Virtual Console, so I might just port it over for a pound and mm-hmm. get it in HD. No, wait, I already... It, no, because it's on my Wii section, so it's already going outputting in HD. Isn't it? No. I don't think you will see any difference in terms no, of graphic I don't think quality. I will. But you will be able to play uh, off TV. Oh, yeah. Which I... Actually, yeah, I will, I'll pay a pound for that. I'm not sure, though. Now that you can play Wii games on the gamepad, can you do that anyway? No. Actually, I checked this. Um, You can't. Okay. You can play it from the gamepad, but you can't play it with the gamepad. So you can have the gamepad screen up, but you still have to use motion control. So if you're playing, like, Mario Galaxy. Right. Okay. Because if you have, like, the disc, then you're going to have to point your Wiimote at the gamepad and try and control it from there. Okay. So right, like a, oh, right, it's like right, a right. TV, basically. So if you wanted, you would have to be controlling it with the Wiimote. Man, this seems so weird, but I mean, I kind of did that with uh, with Wii Fit U. Did something similar before uh, before the Wii Virtual Console was a thing. They would let you play the games off TV, and you can uh, point the Wii Remote at the gamepad to play them. And Mm -hmm. and that worked fine. So I might go back to that and try some Wii games like the uh, Trauma Center series or something. Mm -hmm. See how that works. That could be entertaining. (laughs) No, I I tried it once. And then I tried it with Pikmin, actually, because I went off TV with Pikmin. And so I tried to... I still wanted to use Wiimote and Nunchuck. So somehow, so what ended up happening, I think, is I ended up controlling it from like using the sensor on my TV. But it then appeared on my gamepad, which was the weirdest thing in the world. Huh. Which I, I gave up, like, five minutes in. I was like, you know what, I can't do this. I'm giving yeah. up. But. I think, isn't there, like, you go to the Wii menu, or the Wii mode, and... It like asks you if you want to play using the TV or the gamepad. Yeah, it you can play it on the gamepad as well if you want to. Otherwise, it goes all black, and okay. you can't use it. It's like a whole little section of the Wii U like area. It's like a closed door. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's weird. At least you have backwards compatibility, though. I'm glad they did it. Yeah, it was a lot easier for them than it was. Uh, for Microsoft and Sony. I guess so. Though, still having Wii Virtual Console up, I think is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Though, as soon as they do close that, I am going to hack my Wii and just play them there. <sighs> because I do not see Square re-releasing their JRPGs on the Wii U. Which I find quite sad. Because I want, I want to play them on the gamepad. I want to play Final Fantasy two and three. I want to play Chrono Trigger. I want to play Secret of Mana. I want to play them on my gamepad with my headphones. I just sit and have a fan by me and like relax. But no, Wii Virtual Console is such a letdown. <laughs> Let's let's, yeah. no, let's be honest. It's, it's, it's a letdown. Aside from the GBA games, which should be on 3DS, and most of them were Ambassador games. Like, oh, you can play Wii games on there in case you don't own the disc. Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, and, the whole GBA games on 3DS thing. Like, there, I. <laughs> It seems weird because yes, there are the ambassador games, but um, there are a bunch of uh, technical weirdness behind it, um, and it's like it's a really, really dirty hack the way they have it running um, uh, for the ambassador games. Like you might notice that it goes to DS mode when you play the ambassador games, so you don't have your right. street pass, you can't go to the home menu without closing the game first and all that. And I think they that they don't want to release them without those features. Um, 
Because ah. you like you'll notice that they didn't release the NES ones on 3DS Virtual Console until they got those features in. Um, yeah, you can like there's an, an article on uh, Vooks, V O O K S, that sort of details why the GBA games aren't on 3DS. Um, I think it's possible that they might come in the near future as a new 3DS exclusive Mm -hmm. because maybe the new hardware has the muscle for it but the the moral of the story of software emulation is hard Um, especially on a system with uh, not a whole lot of power and the 3DS doesn't no I guess it I think it's somewhat disappointing that we can't play GBA games on our 3DSs when we could on our DS lights. But well, yeah, I mean the DS light uses the same trick that the 3DS does for the yeah. ambassador games. It just doesn't have to worry about being a DS at the same time, so it's not as bad. Yeah. <sighs> oh well, I'll eventually get over it. <laughs> Back onto E3 though, do you have any runners up? Any like honorable mentions that Alright, so uh honorable mentions for me. Um one would be Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which was shown off during the EA conference. Um This is a prequel to Mirror's Edge showing mm-hmm. uh, the origin story of Faith and how she became a uh a runner. Just something that just wasn't addressed uh, in the original game. Um, it looks nice. It's really shiny. I love the character uh, redesign for Faith. Um, I'm just really disappointed with one thing that I kind of saw coming, and that's the fact that it's an open world game. Oh. And I'm not really it's a big true. fan of open world games, and one of the few things about Mirror's Edge that I did not want to change was the level based structure to it. I don't know. I just mm-hmm. kind of like having the game be made up of these discrete challenges to master, especially in a game with as interesting a uh, movement mechanic as Mirror's Edge has. Like it, I just don't like the idea of like having to walk around a big glorified menu that looks like a city. <laughs> That is a pretty good way to describe an open <laughs> world, like hot world. Oh, no, I think everything is going open world at the time because, well, I think Colin Moriarty summed up pretty well when he said that, that he explained that it's because, like, Skyrim did it and all these other games did open world so well, and then they made lots of money. So everyone was like, <laughs> open world, open world, open world. And so hopefully it will die down. Like, people will eventually be like, hey, you know what? We don't need to have an open world. Eventually. Eventually. I mean, will, I don't mean to say be, that there's no merit yeah. to those games. Um, they're just not for me. And mm-hmm. and I get really, get really disappointed when I see a big trend like that and one that's been lasting as long as it has. And it's just uh, seeing a game that... Like, this is a really stupid thing, but seeing a game that, like, I sort of loved and championed even while everyone else disliked it, and it felt like it was something that was, like, for me, and then uh, the next game does something that is just something I just don't like. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just a little disappointing. I mean, I don't mean to take away from anyone else who loves open world games or is excited by this change, but I'm not. And I think I'll still pick up the game anyway and play it. I'll probably enjoy it. Um, But I'm not quite as excited for it as I was before. But the game looks great, still. Um, Mm -hmm. No, I love the art style. I'm not gonna. I just love like the whole mirror, mirror's edge of like really sterile, mm-hmm. really sort of clean sort of look. It is really good. Um, mm-hmm. It's just it's one of those uh, things where it marries a, f- a form and function style and gameplay. It's like 
it's so sterile because like everything is sterile and um it's white because there's no personality to the city because it's all government controlled and everyone is a big drone um and then you got these like s- sort of splashes of color indoors which uh, not mm-hmm. only is just something that's like really striking and a big difference but uh it also helps you stay oriented indoors because um the extra color sort of helps contextualize uh that wall as being the inside of a space rather than the outside and it helps you helps you maneuver uh, really quickly and intuitively it's i could go on but i won't <laughs> um it's fine so the other runner up for me um I mentioned this earlier, was a Doom from the Bethesda conference. Uh, I am one of the many people who really enjoyed Doom 1 and 2 and really did not enjoy 3. Um, Mm. This 3 sort of became a slow, plodding first-person shooter like every other first-person shooter I played. Um, Apart from Doom. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Um, and I just burned out on that one really quickly, and looking at the footage of this uh, new game, which is just called Doom, because who cares? Um, <laughs> uh, I am I am cautiously cautiously optimistic because mm-hmm. it looks like it looks like they have uh, more speed for the main character, which is a big, really big, important part of what made Doom interesting. Um, It looks like... It looks like it's more about the sort of, like, run-and-gun, like, uh, sort of borderline comedic violence rather than trying to creep you out like Doom 3 did. Um, I'm just sort of really happy to see uh, a return to form for the series. I think... uh, my one concern about it is that I think it could use a little more color because the original Doom was, uh, like, despite the fact that this is, like, really gritty, like, oh, we're in hell setting and we're on Mars and our base is being invaded by demons, there was a lot of color in that game. Um, you sort of, like, look at the new screenshots of the of the Kako demon enemy and compare it to... Uh, the sprites from the previous game and they're just sort of the same sort of tannish brown as the environment around them instead of this like really bright red that they were before. Um, but yeah, that complaint aside, um, it looks fast, it looks fun, it looks brutal. Um, all of three things that Doom 3 definitely was not, in my <laughs> opinion. Um, so I am looking forward to getting my hands on that one as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that sounds really cool, and I think the important thing with Doom, and why I really do want Bethesda to do well with it, is that Doom, when you think about it, is one of those few franchises which is really influential. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean, like, many people... it Wasn't it the first-person shoot, first, first shooter game? Um... It, I wouldn't it was, say it is. It was, it was the first predated, mainstream. It was the one that really popularized the genre, but it was predated yeah. by um, at least by Wolfenstein 3D from the same development mm-hmm. team, um, and arguably a couple other games uh, sort of had the same idea as well. But Doom was definitely the one that uh, brought the genre into light. It was also the first game which brought, which I like to think it was the game. That really popularized this very, very popular thing called pirating. <laughs> I like to think that that game helped cause that. People like copied it onto discs, and now, I mean, now people download torrents. Woo! Oh, thank Go you. do! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I think, looking at it, it looks fun. Will I play it? Probably not, because first-person shooters in general are not my thing. And because while I have a lot of respect for the Doom franchise, I haven't actually played a game in it yet. Yeah. 
mainly mainly because just if it's first person shooter, I tend to stick. I tend to like edge out of the door, like oh that sounds cool, <laughs> kind of disappear <laughs> and. Yeah. Uh, apart from Splatoon, no, that's a third person yeah. shooter. But yeah, I like Splatoon, which is weird, but <sighs> Splatoon is weird. Has... Splatoon is very weird. <sighs> well, my runner-up, well, because I've already said one. Well, my first one was Shimagami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem, or the really <laughs> Japanese name which I can't pronounce. I'm just gonna mess up. Um. Also, my other runner-up is Yokai Watch, which is not new. Mm-hmm. For those who did not know, it came out in Japan, I want to say in 2012. I'm not 100% sure, though. I'm pretty sure it was. But it's very much a Pokemon-inspired JRPG. And it's made by Level 5. They're the same guys which make, like, Nino Kuni. They made Fantasy Life. And, uh, they make another Professor Layden? Game? Professor Layden? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, they make Professor Layton. I keep on forgetting they do that. Which, oh yeah, we have Layton 7, which might not be coming to 3DS. Ugh. I sort of gave up caring about that game after 3. 3 was good, but then it sort of went downhill. But it sold, and it allowed them to do really cool side projects like Harmo Knight, mm. which is kind of how Level 5 works, is they have a big franchise which gives them most of their money. And they'll they'll make that franchise on pretty much a yearly basis. And it, it will be, still be good. But because of that, they can take more risks with smaller games and they can make other. They also put money into other games, which I think is quite a cool way to do it. It's like similar in a way to how Ubisoft right. have their big... like They have their... To a smaller extent, Ubisoft. Because they do have their UbiArt games, like Child of Flight, which is amazing. Valiant Heart. They had Grow Home, which is still, I think, exclusive to PC. I believe I you're say. right, yeah. Which is quite sad. I want it to come to console, because I think it does look quite cool. Um, Yeah, and then they have their Assassin's Creed, which comes out every year. And does Far Cry come out ed- every year? No, I don't think so. Far Cry is a they little have, more like, spaced out. Yeah. And then they'll bring in Watch Dogs. And, uh, but I think Yoko Watch, it finally got localized. And it is basically, it's their new, prof- it's level 5's new Professor Layton. It is huge in Japan. It's like Pokemon to a lesser extent. It's like, when you look at the Japanese 3DS games, which like nail it and like sell tons in Japan, it is Monster Hunter, it is Pokemon, and it is Yokai Watch. And I am, I lo- I, it seems like a bit of a progression from Pokemon, from what I see, at least on the base level, because I don't EV train or IV train, mm-hmm. because I don't play competitively. Because you don't hate yourself. Someone, oh, I just, I, I don't have the time. I'm sorry, I put like 80 hours into <laughs> Pokemon X. Okay, even though I didn't really like it that much. And so I kind of, I'm hoping Yokai Watch could be like my new Pokemon and it's got great reviews in Japan. So Japanese people like it. So hopefully, I will as well. And it's coming out this year as well. Or at least it's in the US. Europe, it's a bit more iffy. As in, because at E3, they only announce American dates. Right. So we don't actually know when some of these games are coming out. We're assuming it's the same time period. But for all we know, it could we could get it earlier. We could get it later. It's like mm-hmm. hoping for 2015. I'm assuming it will be because level 5 tends to release in Europe first, but you never know. And if I'm allowed to... F- can I cheat? Can you cheat? Can I cheat? Sure. Okay, small little thing. Mario Luigi Paper Jam has me optimistically excited, as Aaron... Oh, sorry. As Aaron put it. Yeah, um, I'm pretty much the same way with that one. Um, da, 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 da. They're, these are two f- Ooh, Zeus back. The two franchises I like a lot, but uh, mm-hmm. I wasn't a big fan of the most recent release in either Mario of them. Mario Luigi. No. 
I think I loved Marion Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. Yeah, that was great. But uh, no, oh, yeah, it's Dream Team Marion Lu- on the 3DS. Oh. I wasn't, I wasn't so keen on. Okay, should we let Ju- Lou join in? Lou has just appeared. Sorry, that was the dinging. Yeah, sure. Should we? Sure. Okay, I'll see if he can. If I from Source, this might get cut out. If this takes a while, it hopefully won't. Okay, and he has not checked yet. He's not got the chat open. Well done, Lou. Ah, nail it. Ha ha ha. So, yeah, what were you saying about Mario and Luigi again? Sorry. Yeah, I think uh, I wasn't a huge fan of either. Uh, Mario and Luigi Dream Team or Paper Mario Sticker Star. Um, but those are two series that I like in general, so I am cautiously optimistic that this will redeem them both. I am hoping so as well. I feel like Mario and Luigi... I, don't, not, I think rushed is the wrong word, but I feel like it was contorted a bit into being a year of Luigi game. If you get yeah, what I mean. That's, that's possible. I think... It definitely seems look- like it was light on content. Yeah, it it feels... Like... I looked at it, and I'm... Uh, I feel like it was like... Cause when did Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story come out? So uh, many tabs that's a good open. question. Wait, let's search. I'm sorry, we have not. We do not have extensive. Okay, so it ca- so so okay. So I guess Mario and Luigi did come out in 2009. Okay. That was made by Alpha Dream. See, unless they made another game in that time, which I don't think they did, because they just make. I guess that does make sense. They made Partners in Time in like two years. Mm-hmm. They made it in four years, I guess. I know, I feel like Luigi was added in because they sort of had to. If you get what I mean. Like how mm. ne- Next Level, I think, had to put in Metroid into their Metroid Prime spin off thing. You know, I'm not so sure that's true anymore. After, like, reading what the director was saying about the game. How this is like something that this is a, a game like a game focusing on the Federation, a sort of cooperative uh, first-person sh- shooter game is like something that he had been wanting to make for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you think that the year of Luigi was actually planned at all? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and not just like uh, we have. We're releasing a bunch of games that have Luigi in them. Why don't we just call it the year of Luigi? No, because wasn't it like some anniversary? I'm sure, because... I, th- I don't think it was. No. Year of Luigi. Okay, let's Google this again. Now, because I did... Yeah, I think it was. It was the 30th anniversary of Luigi. It was. Because... Yeah, because he got... He got, yeah, because he got included in 1983 in Super Mario Brothers, I want to say. Okay. In the US, at least. And then he went to Super Mario Bros. on the NES, and then the rest is sort of history. And, oh, Luigi. Oh, I never realized there's like a huge gap of Luigi in between 1991, 1992, I mean. And 2002, it's like 10 years without him being playable. So sad. Oh, Luigi. I just love how Luigi in literally everything is the guy that gets punched. <laughs> like, he's like he's like the butt of everybody's jokes. Like, I just love him so much. He's so cute. He's like so... He, mm-hmm. he means... He, he tries, tries so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Like, okay, I don't think Lou is coming. It's uh, it's one thing I did like about Dream Team was uh, 
like the points where you were inside Luigi's subconscious and it's like you could see his thoughts swirling around in his head and they were all like don't leave me behind bro and it's like I want to do as good as you bro and it's like <laughs> that was like such a character building thing um I really appreciated that mm-hmm. like I personally prefer Luigi to Mario for the pure reason that Luigi has so much more character because Mario he's like, I guess he has more of a character than Link, I guess, I would say. But, like, all I know is I know he rescues princesses and likes spaghetti, though I'm not sure if that is canon. Because <laughs> well, that was in the cartoon. I mean, you, in Super Mario 64, right, you don't touch oh, the joystick for long yeah. enough, he goes to sleep, and he just, like, starts listing off the names of different Italian foods in his sleep. Well, I guess he does like food, hence the... Yeah, the pot belly. The pot belly. Uh, Luigi... No, I think... I do prefer Luigi. If I had to choose between the two, I would choose Luigi. Like, choose between them in what way? So, like, you have, like... Okay, so you can choose. We are going to get rid of Mario or Luigi. One of them is going to die. Which oh, one no. do you want to die? <laughs> and I would send off Mario, because Mario is boring. I mean, Luigi... And plus, Luigi has... Luigi can be Mario. I don't think Mario can be Luigi. If you know what I mean. Because, like, Luigi can essentially do all like, the Mario game stuff. But does Mario know how to use a poltergust? Does Mario know how to get punched on a Super Smash Bros. <laughs> cover? No. Luigi, he's Mario. And Luigi at the same time. So basically, Mario and Luigi, the game series, should just be called Luigi, because he is both of them. If you say so. My very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know, which one do you prefer? I which mean, brother? It's a weird thing, because I think I agree that Luigi is the better character, but I think he's also the one I care less about. It's like, I mean, I know this sounds sad, but it's like, all my childhood memories are, like, playing Super Mario World as Mario, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, with Mario, I have, like, this feeling of, like, oh, this is, like, this guy that... I spent a lot of time with and have a bunch of good memories with, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't really have that for Luigi. Oh, I guess because when I started playing Mario, Luigi was in a bit of like a renaissance sort of period. Like, I remember finding out in New Super Mario Bros. that you could play as Luigi if you held down like the L button. Oh, how appropriate. Like, when you selected your game file, which broke, like, little, like, ten-year-old Lucy's mind. <laughs> and so, I remember literally just playing the rest of the game as Luigi, because why would you play as Mario when you can play as Luigi? He is tall, he is green. He skids further when he jumps. I'm not sure that was in New Super Mario Bros. Yeah. Like, um, was it? I don't know, I probably... I, never, I, I actually did not play that one. ten-year-old kid. I didn't play New Super Mario Brothers, the DS one. DS one. Oh, I have so much nostalgia for that game. It's not that great. But I like it a lot. Okay. So, final topic. Okay. For today. Well, it's more of like a... We, so, if you remember, if you've listened from the beginning, you might have remembered me mentioning something about Earthbound Beginnings. Mm-hmm. I remember. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's because the plan is on um, Nintendo Power Hour. Well, hopefully Lou was meant to be here. So he could also have joined in. But we are going to start a book club for games. So it should. Is it a game club? Is it a book club? You can open the game case and pretend it's a book. Okay, yeah. So just go to your library, open up your game case, and just be there staring at it. And look where the manual should be, 
and it isn't. <laughs> oh. And 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 you can you can feel depressed. That is so sad. Actually, I I miss manual so much. Mm-hmm. Me too. Actually, saying this right now, the shovel knight physical edition. I'm buying it purely because it's going to have like, this amazing manual, apparently. Of course. Yeah. Nailed it, Yacht Club Games. Nailed it. But, no. So, what is going to happen is every month or for a set period of time, because we're not... Because, you know, games are longer. Some games are longer than others. Mm-hmm. In this case, for a month... <sighs> like, each month... Me, Aaron, and Lou are each, like, so I'm going to pick a game, and we're going to play that for a month. Then Aaron's going to pick a game, we're going to play that for a month. Then Lou is going to pick a game, we're going to play that game for a month. And so it's going to go, like, on like that. It's a bit of a cycle. And so I chose Earthbound Beginnings for our first book club thing. Which, for those who do not, who do not know, that is Mother One. It's official translation, not Earthbound Zero, which you can find online if you want to do a bit of that emulating stuff. But Earthbound Beginnings is exclusively on Wii U. Can we say that? It is technically. Yeah, it is. Uh, no one else plans to bring it to the 3DS. No. Unfortunately. But, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. And... We are going to be playing it for the next month, and we are going to discuss it at the end of every Nintendo Power Hour. Mm-hmm. But we are not... There are not going to be any spoilers. I think so at least until the last episode, we might talk yeah, spoilers. Like la- no, last episode. Like, last one is going to be spoilers, which is why we're having it at the end, to make your life so much easier when trying to skip it. <laughs> If you want to avoid them, because I hate it when people randomly put spoilers in the middle of the episode, and I'm just there like, yeah. okay, how far do I go forward? I don't want to miss anything. I don't want mm-hmm. to have the spoiler. It's like, oh, we're so not going to do pretty... that to you. I know. We th- we think of you, and you can play as well. Like seriously, it mm-hmm. is like five pounds forty nine. I don't know how many dollars it is. Probably like seven because America seems to get everything so much cheaper. But it's probably seven dollars, let's be honest. Because the Earthbound games are more expensive. Yeah. Right. But I've played a bit of it. I'm enjoying myself so far. If you've played Earthbound, you will probably like this. If you haven't played Earthbound and want a cool GRPG, it's fun, it's cool, it's an NES game, so it, yeah. <laughs> it's not as good as Earthbound, in my opinion. I have not played Earthbound. Have you not? I have not, so... You are playing Earthbound Beginnings with us, though. Yes, I will be playing Earthbound Beginnings. Hmm. So, I think I might be the only person in the world for which this is true, so maybe I can offer a unique perspective. Actually, that would be quite interesting, because I played Earthbound, and quite recently I beat it. I beat it in April, I want to say, so, and I have okay. replayed it a bit to get some footage. So, it's quite fresh in my mind. There are a lot of similar mi- there are a lot of similarities with Earthbound, I feel. I feel like Mother 1 and Mother 2 are very similar. Like, Mother 2 is almost like a reimagining. Because I thought it was a remake at first. Yeah. So, Lucy knows nothing. I think it was, but, like... I think uh, Mother 2 or Earthbound, I believe the opening is, like, throws back to the original game quite a, a bit. Like, the openings of the two games are very similar. Yeah. Uh Mother, it is a bit more obtuse from the couple of hours I have played from Mother One, but it is definitely fun. It's inspired by Dragon Quest on the NES. It's first-person mm-hmm. perspective. There is no rolling pinwheel stuff. Oh, is that Lou? Oh my God! Oh. Sorry, sorry, everyone. Are we still recording? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. We're going live. 
sorry everyone that I didn't show up on time today. I've had a very, very long day at work, and apparently my alarm clock doesn't agree that I should wake up at certain times. <laughs> Ugh, I've had that problem, but I, I do feel for you. So, but, what have we talked about? Um, we're... Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, is it just me who can hear an echo, or... Actually, no. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm just... My mind's just playing tricks on me. Oh, well. So, we have talked... We're basically discussing the uh, book club. Oh, my movie. God. I'm so excited for the book club. Yeah, we're uh, talking about uh, Earthbound. Um, Earthbound Beginnings. Right. Specifically about the game, or... Yeah, we're kind of just oh. talking about the game right now. We've already gone over the format of the book club. All right. So I'm not sure if you went over this. Have you guys played the regular Earthbound? I have. But I have Aaron not. Hasn't. Yeah, and I think that's the last thing we just talked about. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I've I want to just throw in. I've played a decent amount of it. I haven't played all the way through. I it really has a a unique charm that I, I could really only associate with Earthbound. So I'm interesting to see if that carries over to Mother One or Earthbound Beginnings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, my first impressions, which I've noticed, is that playing Mother One has actually, or Earthbound Beginnings, has lowered my opinion of Earthbound itself. R- really? Yeah, for the pure reason that... Now, I think this is just me wrongly assuming stuff, because... I knew very little about the series. I always thought of Earthbound as this like individual thing, this very original thing, which was very special. And it's still very special. But playing Mother One, and mind you, I'm only like five, six, maybe seven hours in, there is a lot. That, I mean, that's a that good amount a lot. of hours. Like, yeah, it's because ba- I kind of binge played this weekend because Yoshi's Woolly World came out. And I wanted to make sure I'm not behind. Right, yeah. But Makes sense. There is a lot of similar stuff in be- between the two games, like aside from like, the character designs, which... I don't know. It, like, I feel like Earthbound now is not as original. Like Some of the places... like The town name is obviously different, but there are some places where you visit in Earthbound, which you also visit in Mother 1. Right. And there are some items which are quite similar. Now, and what is the general plot of Mother... Like, yeah, we're going into the book club. We're gonna, we're certainly going to figure this all out. But can you give us a rudimentary summary of like what your main objective is in Mother 1? See, the thing is, is that I'm 5,000. They haven't actually like told me that yet. <laughs> which is a bit... <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's so weird. I guess, this isn't spoiled, it's the opening scene of the game. It's, don't worry, nobody died, it's all good. Um, but, like, you get this opening text about how somebody gets kidnapped. Is it your mother? No, it's, like, some person, like, ages ago. Huh. Like, a really old person. I think it's his granddad. Nobody, it hasn't explicitly been said yet. Right. I'm So, this might be all wrong. I'm sorry if you played the game and you're laughing at me right now because of my stupidity. But I think it is. Right. This is a, this just precursor discussion. We're going to get to that real juicy, in-depth, you know, dialogue yeah. next week. Yeah, it's... Like, from what I've heard, it's robots taking over the world. Like, I've seen Starman. Like, mm-hmm. I've, I fought a Starman. Mm-hmm. But it's much, it's much more like NES style, if you know what I mean. It's like doesn't explicitly say it. So I'm like, okay, am I going to get this huge, like, dialogue dialogue thing? Is a fly going to come and tell me about stuff? I don't know. And I'm hoping it gets explained. Because I... Right. I, I don't even know what's going on. I know I've got to go to a zoo. I've, I've gone to a zoo. I've gone to a graveyard already. I've been to some weird magical place in the sky but I still don't know what I'm fighting oh my god this it sounds incredible though I mean that that sounds like what I want to do in a video game is you know go to a zoo and beat up a couple of hippies and stuff 
<laughs> no, oh yeah, Hippies Return, and they have pretty much the exact same music from Earthbound. Uh-huh. So you it, like you play, and the first time you encounter one, and you just start like clicking your fingers along, and it's like, I love the hippie music so much. It's like da 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 I think because it, it is late NES, like mm-hmm. it was released in Japan in 1989, and you can definitely see the difference with late NES games and like original sort of stuff, yeah. like with new, with like Super Mario Brothers. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a cool game. I'm very excited. Like, I like yeah. a lot of podcasts now. I think are are doing book club things. I haven't heard anyone doing. Um, doing earthbound beginnings and that that excites me more than like you know anything on a playstation plus lineup or anything that i'm i'm really excited for this mm-hmm, no oh, i just want mother three now like I, i'm glad we have another one and i'm glad we get to play through it right but i'm thinking next year nintendo bring out mother three okay or announce mother four just <laughs> i i want more mother like, Nintendo knows there's some sort of demand for this, because we are all here over, like, in the West going crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, they did finally get around to localizing it. So they did a, they already localized yeah, it, didn't the they? they? It was already and localized they, and ready to go, it just never got released. Because the the price of cartridges, and uh, because it would have been competing with Final Fantasy 3, I want to say? It sounds right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Final Fantasy 3 in the US, it was in the Europe, we never got Final Fantasy 3. So, ugh. Just, why does... N- games never come out in Europe, like, in old school days? Like, looking at, like... Because I was thinking, you know what? Let's get, I can't play Final Fantasy 3 and all that on my Wii U. You know, one day I'm going to own the cartridge, I'm going to play it on a SNES, it's going to be awesome. Turns out, did it come out in the UK? Oh, what about Final Fantasy 2? Nope. Chrono Trigger? Nope. Secret of Mana? Nope. Oh, how about Earthbound? Nope. It's like, for some reason, JRPGs never came to the UK. For some reason. I don't... Oh, sorry, this is like my complaints of life. Yeah, no problem. <sighs> mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm actually looking at Mother... Three's Wikipedia now, I didn't actually know some of this stuff about it. Um, let's see. Mother. Did you know that apparently it was released... What time do you think Mother 3 was released? 2006. Uh, that is 100% correct. That's just Yeah, I really have it up late. as well. <laughs> no, it, I think Mother games in general are late, because Mother 3 was going to be on the N64. Yeah. I would and then say eventually it got moved to GBA, which is a hell of a move. That's you know nothing <laughs> unsubstantial, but it probably you know holds up much better because of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think. Okay, so I'm not crazy. I remember you know seeing Earthbound very early on. Earthbound Earthbound's been around since 1994, since I was three. Oof. So, oh yeah, that's me. That's, yeah, nice. I mean, that's a, that's a twelve year gap in between that game. That's like the last Guardian status. Oh. Mm-hmm. That is no. Also, I was literally just going on sh- another sad thing. If we have, why we probably haven't had a mother's four announced to talk about is Shiga Sato Itoi, the guy who basically writes the mother games and. He's not, for those who don't know, he's not just, like, an exclusive video game writer. He's, like, really big in Japan. He does, like, films. He does, like, TV, I want to say. Right. But he said that, repeatedly, according to Wikipedia, that he would not be involved in the fourth title. So, that's why there's a fan-made Mother mother 4. I hear it's very good. Like, fans are making one. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it's finished yet. You're right. But I just I am, like, hear from the builds that they've been working on that, you know, mm-hmm. everything seems great. No, yeah, I am signed up. So as soon as that, like, <laughs> comes out, I will know and I will, like, play it. And hopefully it will be as good. Right. Hopefully Nintendo <sighs> doesn't shut it down in the first hour or two. No. Nope. 
they did. They've done lots of public like, stuff with it, like on Twitter and social media. Yeah. And Nintendo is expanding and all that into Snapchat, so I'm sure they heard all about I, it. I, by the way, I love their Snapchat, if only because. Like, their icon, instead of it being the Snapchat ghost, is a boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I just thought that was so good. funny. Anyway. That's pretty good. No, yeah. Nintendo. I, I cringe so much at them sometimes. <laughs> Trying to be cool. It's, it's not going to work. I've never even heard of Periscope, by the way. Oh, Periscope. It's like Twitch, in a way, but for blogging. So you'll huh. randomly be walking around in your periscope. And so it's like a good direct video feed which is sent off, which I believe can only be watched while it's live. So if you see anything on Twitter saying periscope, you should watch it. Right. Because it, I don't think it goes anywhere else. And then you like it and stuff. And It's like a new way for Nintendo to try and get people watching their stuff and get into new audiences. Right, right. So they'll probably end up periscoping their Nintendo Treehouse stuff, I'm assuming. I haven't actually, like, followed them there, so I don't really know. Right. Oh. But, Nintendo Power Hour Book Club, that is going to be fun. So much It will be cool. Yeah. Like, please play with us. Like, we would love it if some of you play with us, and then... Now, assuming... Like, because I'm sure we're going to publicize this everywhere that we're doing this book club. Because yeah. everyone should be playing this game regardless. It's a piece of yeah. gaming history. But what should we should we prompt responses? Should we ask for emails? Should we ask for questions? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, start a conversation with us. Um, especially if you pick the game up at the same time we do, play along with us. Um, it'll be fun to experience this together. Mhm. Yeah. I think that. Yeah, I think it's the great thing with a book club is that, like, we three we're gonna try and get on like pretty much every single Nintendo Power Hour. So you're always gonna have our input, but because we're gonna also have guests coming on, hopefully, maybe they've been playing the game as well. We might just like hint, like, hey, you should, you should, you should play a bit of this game so we can talk, like. And hopefully you'll be able to get somewhat new opinions. Mm -hmm. But like, who knows, maybe if you've been playing it tons and you know a lot, who knows, you might eventually come on and talk to us about it. It might not be for Earthbound Beginnings, it could be for another game. But we do, like, send us emails, tweet at us. It'll be fun, we want to talk about it. We will be watching, and we will be listening to all of your comments, and if you send us something, chances are you're going to be read on the air, and if mm -hmm. you, as long as you want us to share it. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you send us feedback, or you send us how you like the game, yada, 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 we're definitely going to include it. Mm -hmm. And we will probably comment and add our opinions on top, because we are opinionated people. Very. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I think on that we are probably going to have to finish now. Ugh. So, Nintendo Power Hour. Okay, let's, there's so much monk stuff to say. Ugh. I need to remember this. I have it written down. Okay, Nintendo Power Hour. It's not the only Middle of Nowhere Gaming podcast. Also, check out our website, middleofnowheregaming.com. And we have Facebook, Middle of Nowhere Gaming. We have Twitter, mong.com, all spelt out. I don't know why. There's a dot is in dot in it but you know courtney chose it um instagram i think we're middle of nowhere gaming try mong um hopefully you don't get anything rude because it's a bit of a I rude think, word in the uk <laughs> i think <laughs> as long for tumblr and instagram as long as you search up middle of nowhere gaming it'll pop up yeah if you search up mong you might get dodgy results oh my god that yeah <laughs> at least don't, from the don't UK. search up mong no, yeah, um, I did not know that existed. It was a bad word until I didn't think anybody used it. So a couple of weeks ago, someone called someone a mong. I was just there, like, just <laughs> casually there, <laughs> thinking, like, yeah. That is why I try and avoid getting tagged on things on Facebook, because I'm like, when my university's cool, and they look at something called mong, 
on my Facebook feed. They just felt like, Lucy, can we talk about inappropriate language? I was just like, right. Okay. Ugh, but uh, what else do they have? Um, I th- oh yeah, YouTube. We used to be Mong Network. I think we are now just middle of nowhere gaming. Oh. I'm pretty sure we are no longer Mong Network. As of lately. As of lately, I'm pretty they sure we are. Wait. Changes. I know. I think because somebody figured out how, that we could have four words in our title. That's great. Wait, I'm pretty sure. I want to make sure. Oh, I had it written down, but now I'm like middle. Yep, it's middle of nowhere gaming. No Mong Network. So I think we are still YouTube.com slash Mong Network. Who knows? Oh. And also, we have Twitch. Don't really use it that much, but who knows? I think we're trying to revive it. Or will be yeah, in the well, next. Yeah, we've got some plans. We got some plans. Yeah, we have some plans, and that is Mong plays at Twitch. Who knows? That might also change with our plans, but you never know. It's Mong plays at Twitch. We also upload anything that goes on there to Mong plays the YouTube channel, which you can also check out. I think that is everything. So you can find Lou at at Lou Cantaldi. You can find Aaron at... It's, uh, at our crush. It's A-R-C Rush. Mm-hmm. And you can find me at Blue Fox 2 triple O. The letters, not the numbers. I'm sorry, I'm confusing. Um, thank you so much for listening. And Mong! 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 Mong.